A new homeless shelter meant to move people out of the I-90 encampment is nearing completion. Tonight, our first look inside. Plus, growing concern over a dangerous new drug that looks like candy. As a smoky haze fills the sky, we have high fire danger headed into the weekend. Red flag warnings in place both Friday through Saturday. Crim 2 News at 4 begins now with Whitney Ward and Jeremy Legue. It is not safe, it is not compassionate, it's not humane. So we need to move them into a much better space. The Spokane mayor getting ready for the opening of the new Trent Avenue homeless shelter. Today she's giving Krem 2 a first look inside. Good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining us here on Krem 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. That new shelter has been in the works now for more than a year. The doors will officially open on Tuesday, but the project is far from finished and it's still unclear exactly how many people who are currently staying at that big homeless camp along I-90 will actually go there. Today the mayor told me this new Trent facility is meant to be another option for those campers, but isn't the only solution to clear out that camp. I had a chance to talk with Mayor Woodward one on one today to ask what it's going to take to get people out of that camp and into this new shelter. This is all new fencing right here and around this parking lot as well as an ADA ramp. And that was one of the last um, things that we needed to make sure was installed before we could open. What you can see it's a very, very large facility and we've had the um, flexibility to kind of vision how we wanted to divide the spaces up. So you'll see that we have areas that are sectioned off for different demographics within the homeless population. This is for males, 18 and older. And right now there are 13 beds here. But if you come in, you can see that they get their own, their own bed. They do have one bin for storage. Do you have uh, indoor plumbing yet? Uh, inside plumbing for the offices. For the offices. Yes. And so not yet for showers or restrooms? No. Is that... So you can see the porta potties right here. Right. There will be a dozen porta potties to ADA compliance. Uh, and we will have shower trailers out here. Is that going to be the permanent no, solution no, no, or is this no. just this a temporary? Is just temporary? Okay. We are hoping that Commerce will fund. Uh, restrooms that would be constructed inside along with laundry facilities. Mayor, how much of the commerce funding will eventually go toward this Trent facility? We don't know yet. So right now they're looking at a reimbursement program. So they want to make sure that the people um, who are coming here are coming from the encampment on the washed out property. That's not a permanent solution. So they won't get to stay there permanently. What kind of outreach have you guys been doing already to try and entice some of those campers there now to get them here? Well, the outreach has been with the street teams, the outreach teams with different providers, <laughs> but it's the assessment that will happen first. Some of them will be amenable to coming here, some of them won't, but we do believe that once people start coming here and the outreach teams come here to see what we're offering, that more people will accept um, the shelter as an option for them. So clearly this is just part of the equation with yes. the ultimate goal, of course, of trying to get that Camp Hope cleared out completely. What is the timeline then for some of these other alternatives like the Sunset Hill Project? Well, it sounds like uh, as soon as the Quality Inn purchase closes that that would be transitioned within 60 days. Do you think you're going to be able to enforce SITLI after this? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are getting close with the council to um, move over the finish line and a revised illegal camping ordinance as well. Do you feel like you and council are communicating well and, and negotiating and compromising on that issue? There has been compromise because we had different ideas on what that looked right. like, what should look, what that should look like, but we have compromised and uh, we've leaned in on the common ground. I think there's going to be more work to do. Um, even though this is a revised ordinance, it can be revised again. Mm -hmm as we move along and see if this is working, is it enough? Is, are we seeing the impact that we want to? If not, you know, we can go back to the table and talk about it. And just moments ago, the Trent shelter opened its doors for the public for the first time, giving neighbors and nearby businesses their first look inside. That's where we are turning now to find Creme 2's Cody Proctor waiting to hear some of their reactions. Cody, what's the energy like there right now? 
Well, right now, mostly just anticipation, Whitney, because at the moment, we're actually waiting for the ribbon cutting for the Trent Resource and Assistance Center to start this open house here. This just started at 4 o'clock. This is set to last until about 6 o'clock. They are showing this to neighbors to give them a chance to check out the facility and to meet staff as well and tour it. And if you want to check it out, that is located at 4320 East Trent. It's not far from Spokane Community College. Now, so far, there are about 20 people but this did just kick off. They're actually getting ready for that ribbon cutting that is set to happen about any moment to let people go inside and begin this open house. So again, we're going to continue to try and bring you reaction tonight from people here who are visiting, who are seeing this facility for the first time. So the feeling is mostly just anticipation, waiting to check out and meet people that are here that will be part of the staff as well. Reporting in Spokane, Cody Proctor, Crumpton News. Cody, thank you so much. In the meantime, City Council will consider a new sit and lie ordinance at their next meeting, and the mayor told us today it is a compromise between her office and the council. The new proposal would prohibit camping within 50 feet of downtown viaducts, and that's regardless of available shelter space. It would also make camping illegal within three blocks of a shelter or anywhere a police officer deemed it a substantial danger or immediate threat. And camping would also be illegal all along the Spokane River and Lataw Creek unless there is no available shelter space. Council will take up that ordinance on September 19th. Well, it is officially September 1st, which means we are nearing the end of Tom's barbecue, but we're not done yet. Tonight, Tom is out there on the grill right now cooking up St. Louis burgers. So let's check in with him. He's out there in the heat, so I know it's really hot. Uh, Tom, what can you tell us? First of all, I have a question. What is a St. Louis burger? Oh, no. let me tell you something, my oh. friend. Look at my friend right here, uh, Jeremy, right there. Uh, <laughs> St. Louis style burgers. Uh -huh. uh, these are burgers that have like ricotta cheese. They're very ricotta? popular, obviously, Ooh. in St. Louis. Oh, really? And I didn't really but and I'll tell you my reason why I'm doing St. Louis burgers okay. in a little bit. But uh, the raviolis, toasted raviolis, okay. are a big thing in St. Louis. Okay, I didn't and know. I, yeah, me either. But anyway, okay. so we're going to be doing that. So it's a burger with a ravioli on it, and what? then a little bit of marinara sauce. There's a special marinara? reason why I'm doing this tonight, Ooh. and I'll tell you about that coming up in the next part of the broadcast. But now Ooh. it's time for you Ooh. and weather. No, I, I guess I'll do weather, but Let's man. Go. Uh, I am very curious now. I have no idea. Well, I know what a St. Louis burger is, but I have no idea what it tastes like yet. Right now, we got a bit of a smoky haze in the sky, and believe it or not, air quality is in the moderate range. You're probably feeling that a little bit in your, I don't know, sinuses, kind of just a little bit of light congestion almost. 74 on the AQI, not quite at that unhealthy for sensitive groups, but we're going to keep a close eye on it today and tomorrow. Haze is expected to stick around. Fires burning off to the north are spreading down into the region, and with little change in our weather pattern, we're really not going to get much wind to move this out. However, what we are going to get is more warm temperatures. We're in the mid to low 90s today. Tomorrow, we crank it up even more, and with warmer temperatures, and then that warm temperature activity creates atmospheric instability. We have red flag warnings for locally strong wind gusts as temperatures approach 97 to 105 degrees. The good news is, tomorrow starts out cool. The bad news is tomorrow afternoon, we're knocking on the door of 100 once again across much of the inland northwest. Forecast right now puts Spokane at 99, but if we just go a degree above that, it would be the latest in the season we've ever seen a 100 degree high. Coming up though, I've got your Labor Day weekend forecast. Very much looking forward to that, Jeremy. Thank you. Well, the plan to send $500 million back to Idaho taxpayers, $410 million to Idaho schools, and flatten Idaho's income tax rate to under 6%. It's all just one Senate vote away now from going to the governor. The House passing that bill overwhelmingly here just a few hours ago, and this really has not been much of a surprise since 35 of the 70 state representatives co-sponsored this bill. It also has the backing of 24 state senators, which is where the bill is now being debated on the Senate floor. We are tracking this special session there in Boise right now. We will be certain to let you know what they end up deciding. In other top stories tonight, Lori Vallow's attorney filed a motion to ban TV cameras in the courtroom. Vallow's attorneys fear that the cameras and microphones could overhear something they said that could violate attorney client privilege. Now the attorney also proposed to only ban cameras with zoom functions. Vallo and her husband Chad Daybell, their joint trial will start in January. The couple's accused of the murder of Daybell's ex-wife and Vallo's two children.